Well, good morning and welcome to a new week of Shelter Daily and His Word. It's a joy to be able to come and, and just, again, share this time with you. And I want to thank you for tuning in with us. Thank you for uh, listening. If you're on podcast or if you are watching us through one of our platforms, thank you uh, just for giving us this 30-minute time to be able to share with you from the Word of God. Um, I do, do want you to uh, help me if you can. I would love to hear from you. It's, it's very important that you uh, give us uh, feedback. So please do so. We'd love to hear, you know, you know, constructive criticism, anything that we can do to make better what we're doing, however we need to do it. And I would love to be able to uh, up our game on anything that we're doing as far as, like, you know, bringing the message, especially because this message is so important. The Word of God, I believe, is uh, one of the most important things that we that we do to to share what it says and to be able to impart spiritual truths that will enable your spirit man to grow so i really do covet uh, the comments that people would make to let us know how we're doing and to give us you know those thumbs up and just to let us know hey pastor you know really appreciate the the messages and if there's things that you want us to cover, things that you would like for us to share in our time of devotional, uh, our, our teaching sessions, please let me know. I, I would love to be able to uh, customize some of the things. In fact, I'm looking forward to, we're going to be having an opportunity where we'll do a, uh, a question and answer time where you'll be able to submit questions to us. So uh, you can be thinking about that. But in the meantime, if you want to submit questions to us, uh, maybe there's things we've been talking about or teaching about that you would like to, to reiterate. Or maybe, uh, just maybe things that you've been hearing have just touched your heart. And if it has, man, I'd love to be able to hear from that and share that because I'd love to hear and let the audience that uh, is watching us and listening to us know about the things that, uh, uh, how this word is affecting your life and how it's uh, enabling you to be stronger in Christ. So with that said, let's uh, just open up with a quick word of prayer. And again, we'll just give thanks to the Lord. Father, thank you for the opportunity we have today to just come and bring the word. God, I know your word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces to dividing asunder the soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It discerns the thoughts and the intents of our heart. And so today, God, we're just asking you, God, would you discern those things in us and let us, God, as, as believers, to grow? And Lord, if there's one here today that's listening, God, or they're tuning in, Father, I pray that the things we say today will just touch their hearts. Maybe they're going through things in their lives, and God, that we can offer a word of encouragement to them and help them strengthen their lives. God, that, that's my prayer. And I love you, and I give you thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, if you've been following with us, you know that uh, last week we were uh, talking about Psalms 23, and we're not quite done with that. We actually uh, left off at uh, verse 4. We were in verse 4, talked uh, about the valley of the shadow of death, and talked about how that we fear no evil uh, because the Lord is with us and how wonderful it is to know that the shepherd is with us everywhere that we go and that he does not leave us nor forsake us, but that he's always there according to Hebrews 13. Uh, he does those things for us. We don't have to fear what men do to us because we know Christ is always with us. And that is the promise. And, you know, and I thought about that uh, some more as uh, as I was uh, getting things ready for today, and I realized that you know uh, I've read Fox's Book of Martyrs uh, one, and then um, then also there was another one that came out that kind of followed. Uh, called, I think it was called Jesus Freaks, and um, some years ago, and and it just talks about the the modern day martyrs, and I and I was thinking about people that are living in countries where the gospel's not open, where it's not free. And uh, they don't have the freedoms that we have here in the United States, which I'm very thankful for, uh, because we have the opportunity to do what we're doing, like Shelter Daily, and, uh, and being able to bring the Word of God in. And even though we know that they may not always be this way for, for us, we also know that uh, despite all of that, we're going to get the message of Jesus Christ out some way, somehow, because it's important uh, to share the good news with people, that Jesus loves them and cares for them, and He died for them, rose again, and He's coming back again. But I was thinking about these uh, martyrs who, uh, who or, or Christians who end up becoming martyrs. And, and one of the things that uh, they have one thing in common is that they know Christ is with them. And that they're able, you know, to uh, speak the name of Christ 
despite the fact that death is knocking at their door. They don't care. They're not going to give in. They're not going to give up. And they die, but they don't die a, they don't die a miserable uh, death as far as, you know, whether just, you know, screaming out and things like that. They die a death that glorifies God. And, and I see this, I, I see this in the book, book uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, you see this. And some of the horrific things that uh, the early martyrs went through, the things that they had to endure, and yet they always turned it to give God glory. No matter what was going on, it was always to give the glory to God. That They, were, they counted themselves um, as nothing, but they decreased so that God could increase. And that to me is just really, it, it goes in line with, you know, when the psalmist said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. And today what I want to do is I want to take a look at the next verse, verse 5. And, and, and I, want to, I want to just take uh, this verse a little bit and just kind of uh, dissect it some, and, and then we can move on from there after we get done here. But there's something interesting that I find in verse 5. And if the, Lord is, if the Lord is my shepherd, and that's what started, because that's the kicker right there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Everything I have need of is found in the Lord. So if he is my shepherd, then verse 5 tells me the wonderful protection that he gives to me. So here's what he says. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup runs over. And this is a very interesting uh, picture, if you will, that he paints for us about the shepherd and what he does for us. And, and for those of us that are, that are not sheep herders, we're, we don't know anything about being shepherds, uh, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things, uh, imageries here that the psalmist is using because that's what he was. He was a shepherd and he uh, watched over sheep he, when he was young. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us that he watched the, his father's sheep. So he uses his experience of, a, of being a shepherd boy and growing up as a sheep herder. He uses that experience and he uh, gives us a picture of what it's like when the good shepherd, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, is watching over us. What, what, what does a shepherd do with his sheep? Uh, you know, you kind of get this, some, some people kind of get this idea that, well, you know, shepherding must be great because all you do is just let those sheep out into the fields and you just, you know, you sit back, you kick back, you relax and you just, you know, count the stars in the sky at night. You just, you know, you, but that's not, honestly, that's not the way it is. And it's not a simple task to be a, a sheep herder. It's not that simple. It's not that easy. There's a lot involved in, in watching sheep and taking care of sheep. Uh, one reason is because they like to wander. We talked about that. They love to wander off. And so you've got you know, to always be watchful and mindful of where they are, what they're doing, where they're going. Uh, you've got to constantly keep your, you know, your eyes fixed upon the sheep because they just have a tendency to wander off. Uh, when one goes, they all start going. And this is one of the, the examples, and I shared this, where Jesus talked about that when a shepherd who has a hundred sheep loses one, what does he do? He said he leaves his 99 and he goes after the one because every sheep counts. Every one of them count. There's not one of them that is of lesser value than any of the others. The reality is, is that that's exactly how it is with us as believers we all count. It doesn't matter who we are. From pastor on down to the janitor, everybody counts. Everybody's important. Everybody is, is of value to Christ. And that we, always ought to, we ought to always keep that in mind. That no matter where a person comes from, no matter what side of the tracks that they were born, no matter what color of skin that they have, none of that matters. What matters is, is that they are the sheep that Jesus loves. He gave himself for them. And therefore, we ought to love them because Christ loved them. We're in this together. We're not, we're not an island. We're not, we're not in this by ourselves. We're in this together. And that becomes really important when you think about what the Lord is trying to say here to us in these, in these verses that, that the shepherd uh, David lays out for us and, 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 and he kind of unfolds this before us. 
But these imageries are, are, for many of us in Western culture, they're very foreign to us. We don't really understand them. And so it's hard for us to kind of grab hold of. And so my intention has been through this psalm is to break this down and to give you insight into some of the things of these images that the, that the psalmist uses and, and, and understanding how the shepherd actually uh, takes care of his sheep. And remember, as I said early on, that when he is my shepherd, when he is my shepherd, and we've, you know, we've looked at the, the various aspects of, of the Lord being our shepherd. We, you know, we, we uh, have said that you know, when the Lord is our shepherd, you know, he uh, prospers us. He, uh, we have everything that we need in our lives. When, when he's my shepherd, then uh, we are in a position you know, where we're satisfied. We have great satisfaction because of how he brings us to these places. And so we become very, our lives are very satisfied because of that. And then we found out that, you know, that, that we have uh, uh, the ability uh, to be restored, that if we've veered off, uh, we are restored. And then he, but not only that, he actually enables us to where we no longer desire to veer off. And this is, this, that's powerful to me. It's like, wow, to think that I don't have to uh, desire the things of this world. I don't have to let that capture my attention anymore because I know how good. You know, come taste and see the Lord is good. And we see that in him and we see how wonderful he is. And then we found out that, that even when we're walking through these dark times or we're going through dark moments in our lives, it doesn't matter because the shepherd is always there. He's always, and, and this is the, 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 one of the greatest things for us is that he is there and that no matter what we face in life, no matter what we go through, that he's always going to be there and that that just becomes even more important to us. We don't have to fear. We don't have to uh, be cons- you know, uh, overwhelmed or anxious about things because we know the Lord is with us. And then we move into this, this, this fifth verse here. And this is one of the images that he paid. He says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now, most of you, I would imagine that when you read that, you think of this grand banquet table that he sets out for us. And he sets us down there and we all eat and the enemies of our soul watch us as we sit there and we're having this great meal. And right there in the midst of all of our enemies, the Lord just sets his big table down for us. And we just get to gather around and we get to have this. And we always think about the marriage supper. We always think about, you know, those kinds of things. But I want to I want to show you something. I want, I, want, I want you to see something that maybe you've never seen before. I know I didn't until I did this study. I didn't see this, but now I, now it makes perfect sense. Uh, remember when we talked about walking through the valley of the shadow of death? And there was a couple of different things we talked about. We talked about how that the valley of shadow of death was uh, uh, an actual valley that was termed a shadow of death because that was where they had erected the uh, the god, uh, the idol god um, uh, of uh, Malak, and, and there uh, they uh, offered children as burnt sacrifices to appease him and to bring fertility to the land uh, when they were following after the idol gods and they were doing this, even the children of Israel were doing it. But we also found out that also as a shepherd, because it's a very mountainous area, that uh, the shepherd would have to oftentimes lead his sheep through these, these, these uh, valleys and, and they're like a gorge and then going through those on either side are caves and sometimes, you know, unbeknownst to the, to the shepherd and the sheep that there are either lions or bears in there. And David, of course, being accustomed to that, knew lions and bears were there. Uh, and he, of course, had encounters with both of them and uh, was uh, able to defeat them. And, and as a shepherd, they are, shepherds are willing to die for their sheep so that their sheep can be safe. They'll do whatever they can to protect their sheep. And so we see that imagery. Now we come here in, 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 in this verse uh, number five, and he says, now he says, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. I said, okay, what does that mean? He prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. What, what's he really talking about? What is this table? And maybe you've asked that, or maybe you've just assumed, well, it's just like, you know, like a dinner table. He just sets a dinner table up and, you know, there we are having dinner. But, but I found out that they say that in the East, okay, in the Middle East, that the pasture lands there, uh, where the sh- a lot of times the sheep, you know, are at, a lot of times those, those pasture lands are covered with insects and harmful creatures that the shepherd you know, has to concern himself with, with his sheep. 
So, uh, you know, you can imagine, you know, if there's, you know, they're out there in this, you know, field and they're grazing or whatever, that there are, there are insects that, uh, that you have to deal with and you have to go through uh, these kinds of things. In fact, um, one, of the, one of the imageries, and I, I meant to mention this too, one of the imageries about you anoint my head with oil, uh, where it says uh, my cup runneth over, we'll talk about that because that, that's another one of those imageries. Um, and, and here, what happens is this, is that what the shepherds would do to feed their, their flock, what they would do is they would take, they would place a table a, uh, where they would put uh, food on and they would put it on a little raised table. It would just be high enough off of the ground where that the insects and the cre- creepy things you know, wouldn't, wouldn't bother it and they, that they wouldn't uh, have to deal with that. And because those things could bring harm to them. They could bring harm to the sheep. And again, this is the imagery of, of the shepherd looking for ways to protect his sheep. Uh, the sheep are of great value, right? You know, sheep offer wool. Uh, you know, they have they, their, their, their wool. When they do, a, a, you know, they shave them, they, they do that for their wool. Uh, they also offer meat. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I, I be honest with you, and I, I know this, this may not sound very pleasing to some of you, but when I was in Jordan, I had the privilege of going out to dinner with uh, Brother Jamal, who is uh, director of Global Hope Ministries out there, and, um, and we were doing some ministry work uh, and helping with the refuge while we were there, and he took us out for dinner, and we, he took us to this one place where they came out and they brought this huge uh, plate, this pan, filled with lamb. It was just piled up with lamb. And there were chunks, about an inch, you know, about an inch. Uh, they, but as part of that, uh, on that, that was also the fat of the lamb. Now, I'd never had the fat of the lamb before. Uh, but it was, it, I tell you what, uh, the fat of the lamb was the most flavorful uh, uh, that I had ever had. I've never had anything like that. And what you would do is you take a piece of the fat, you take a piece of the meat, and then you would you would, you, would, you would eat that, and it would bring about it would just a, a completely different flavor. And some of you have probably had lamb, and you 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 know what that tastes like. But uh, many of you probably have never had the fat of the lamb, and it reminded me of what the Bible talked about when the priests that would eat the fat of the lamb. And I thought, wow, you know, there is there is uh, something very unique about eating the fat of the lamb. And it's just uh, uh, because that, and again, th- the reason I say is because th- the, the sheep are very, very valuable. They offer, they offer sustenance. They offer a warmth because you can make clothes, things like that out of that. So, so they do everything they can. The shepherd does everything he can to protect his sheep because he doesn't want disease to infi- you know, infect any of them. Because if disease can affect one, it can affect all. You can literally wipe out an entire uh, entire herd of sheep, you can wipe the whole herd out uh, just because one got sick. Um, if they uh, eat something they're not supposed to, if they get a hold of uh, um, insects that, um, that can come and bite them and, and uh, they become infested with, with insects, uh, there's all kinds of things that can happen. And so what they would do is they would, they would uh, have these, like, these tables and they would put the food on the table for the lambs to eat. So in the midst of the enemies, the insects and the creeping things that were in the ground, in the midst of the enemies, you prepare a table before me. Isn't that fascinating? This is what David said. I, I, the shepherd will, will prepare a table in the midst of, or when the, when the enemies are all surrounding me. This little raised table enabled them to feed safely in the presence of, of their enemies. Now our enemies are all around us. And and, and excuse me, they're 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 they seek to harm us. They seek to hurt us. They seek to, to come against us. But our shepherd protects us by raising us above this. He lifts us up above and these you know we are in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians 1 3. Bless the, the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. We have been lifted into heavenly places. That's fascinating, isn't it? 
to think that, you know, I, I know we live here on the earth, and I know that you look around and say, well, man, there's enemies everywhere. There's all kinds of things that come against us. So we got, you know, you got, uh, you got the, the world itself, you got the culture, you got government, you got, you know, this, that, and the other who, who are seeking to bring harm against the people of God. And yet in all of that, when our enemies are all around us, seeking to harm us, the shepherd will raise us above those enemies so that we can dine with him. We can spend time with him. We can be there with him. He is the Lord of lords, the King of kings, the God of gods, and he is the one who blesses us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. That, that, that's a wonderful thing. I've been, you know, I've been on, on Sundays, I've been talking about how that we're seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. You know, Ephesians, Paul talked about this throughout the book of Ephesians and how imperative it is for us to recognize that and to see how uh, that as the people of God, we are seated in these places with him so that we can be protected and watched over. And, and this, is, this is, to me, is just fascinating. And, and then he says, you know, he said, not only do you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, but he said, do you anoint my head with oil and so that I have abundance, it, my cup runs over. In other words, I don't lack. And this is, again, this is one of those things when you, when you see the, the, the beauty of how that when the enemies are all around us to seek us harm, the shepherd protects us by raising up, and then he provides oil. Now, here's, here's the thing about oil. You've, you've probably heard of, uh, uh, and you probably have seen it. I don't know if you've ever, uh, have, have ever seen what uh, they do with um, animals. Uh, every year they, they, they have to take them through a, a kind of a bath, if you will, uh, a dip, if you will. And the reason for that is because when they're out in the fields, uh, fleas, ticks, uh, other things like that, you know, attach themselves to the animals and they can't, they, they can't, you know, take care of that. They can't. Um, and, and so the Bible here is saying, you know, you anoint my head with oil. Um, and, you know, and it, and it, you anoint my head. Now, for us, again, the imagery we have, of course, is talking about the anointing oil that God places on us. You know, the anointing is on us. And, you know, Psalmist said, you know, in one place he said, you know, your anointing oil is like that, you know, that ran down the beard, even Aaron's beard, down to the skirt of his garment. He said, that's what unity looks like. Unity is, is like this a precious anointing oil. And an, an oil, oil is an ointment. Oil is, a, is a, uh, an ointment that's used uh, for healing. It's used for protection. It's, it's used for a variety of different things. And shepherds would use oil, you know, to put around the face of the, face of the, the sheep, the, on the head of the sheep, on the body of the sheep. They would dip them in oil and they would, in, in, this, in this oil because it would help protect their skin from uh, the, uh, the insects and things like that. It would help to be able to, like, you, you may have seen um, where they do what they call uh, a cow bath, if you will, where they take a cow and they bring a cow into like a pool and it's, it's just a trough, big trough, but it's deep enough for them to walk down into it. They walk down into it and in it is the stuff they need in order for them to be able to, to, to rid their bodies of some of the the insects, the, the fly bites, all different kinds of things that go on with animals that are out in the fields um, that, you know, and, you know, and a, a farmer doesn't have the time to go through every one of them and spend, you know, it, you'd spend an entire day, you know, just going through and trying to rid, you know, these enemies that try to attack us and try to attack the animals. And, and the, the sheep, same thing, you know, they have long fur, and, or, or, or I shouldn't say fur, they don't have fur, they have wool. <laughs> they have long wool, and that wool, uh, you know, gets thick, and, and, and it, when it's thick like that, you know, uh, burrowing, you know, insects can burrow down in there, and they can attach themselves to the, to the skin of that, and, and, and a lot of times create irritants. Uh, they can uh, infect them with diseases, things of that nature. So oil, oil is used. Now, the other part of that about oil is, is that, you know, it's an oil of gladness because how glad they are when, when the oil is applied. Uh, it's soothing. There's something about the anointing 
when God's anointing comes in. I, I've seen it so many times, even in my own life, when I've, I have, I have, you know, let me, if I can be honest with you, I have preached under the anointing where I've been anointed to preach, and I've preached when I wasn't. And I can tell you this, there's a huge difference. And you've probably sat under people who have uh, preached when they were anointed and preached when they weren't. Just, it don't click. And then there have been times when, under the, thank God for the anointing, because it is that anointing um, Ray Hughes uh, preached many years ago. It's the anointing that makes the difference. And I do believe that. I believe that the anointing does make the difference. It makes a difference in how you sing. You know, there's a lot of good singers out there, but I would rather have one who's a not so good singer, but sings under anointing because they have been anointed. God has placed an anointing on them than to have someone who can sing professionally and just sing a song. You know, those don't move me. But I've had people that they weren't professionals, but man, when they sang, man, was I moved. And there is, you know, there's a danger, you know, trying to do ministry and trying to do the work of God without the anointing of God. Don't do that. You can't. Now, you, can, you can do it. You'll have a, a measure of success, but it will always be with problems. What the Lord wants to do is he wants to take and anoint you. He wants to anoint me. Uh, and he wants us to have that anointing because when we walk in that anointing, when we're, when we're preaching in the anointing, we're teaching in the anointing, then gladness and blessings overflow. And that's what he's talking about. He said, he said you anoint my head with oil and my cup runneth over. In other words, it, there's, it's amazing how much God deposits in us when we allow the anointing. You know, if I want to be effective to the world, then I've got to spend time with the one who allows me to do what I do. I've got to spend time with him in order for me. I've got to have an inner court experience, uh, Brian Cutshaw would say, I have to have an inner court experience with him if I want to stand out and be prophetic to the people. If I don't know what God is saying, I can't say it to you. It's just, it, it's just the way it works. And the same thing for any of us. If you're a teacher, a singer, a songwriter, a musician, uh, whatever your position, uh, 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 if you're the janitor of the church, I don't care if you're the janitor of the church. Listen, you can, you can do the work that God's called you to do with gladness when you know you've been anointed by God to accomplish the task. So my prayer is for you today is that you will learn how to sit at the table of the Lord in the presence of all your enemies and to know that God's going to satisfy you with good things and that his anointing oil is going to overflow in your life, and you can do all things through Christ who gives you the strength. So, Father, today, I just ask you again, Lord, that you would, would you one more time anoint your people? Just one more time, God. In these last days, let us rise, God. Let us, Lord, uh, learn how, God, to be satisfied with what you have provided for us. And let us, Lord, be able to come to this table that you prepare for us in the presence of our enemies. Not to fear, Lord, those gnawing things, God, that would come against us. But God, to be able to enjoy what you prepare for us. And then, God, allow your Holy Spirit to anoint us, God, from the top of our head all the way down to the skirts of our garments, if you will. Father, I just ask you that we can walk on whatever, whoever teaches, preaches, sings, plays, serves, whatever they do, whatever capacity, God, that they're in. No matter what it is, God, let them always remember that we can't do this without the holy anointing on our lives. Father, I thank you for that today because when we, when we well, are anointed, there's gladness there. And God, I believe that, Lord, you brought gladness to your people today through this word. And we'll give you a praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for another episode, uh, staying with us through this uh, time of Shelter Daily His Word. Glad you did, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. So have a great day. We love you, and God bless you as you go about your day.